Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Shire. I feel the need to introduce myself today for those of you who are just watching my videos for the very first time. Thank you so much for stopping over to watch another video here on my YouTube channel. If you're an old member, I could never say thank you enough for your support. Of course, guys, it's been a long time since I vlogged, probably the longest I've ever been able for my YouTube channel, like two months now. And um, yeah, so you can imagine how hard it is right now for me to pick up my camera and vlog. I'm not even sure if that's why my voice sounds very, you know, there's lots of anxiety in my voice right now. I think it's just because I haven't been doing YouTube in a while and I'm just anxious coming back here today so please bear with me in the meantime guys did you notice that we are now on, on 7k like we are now on 7k we're almost hitting 10k i know guys like i posted on my instagram story last night i have to make noise about stuff like this so i posted on my instagram story last night and a couple of you guys came on who follow me on instagram of course said congratulations and felicitated there thank you so much for all of your felicitations i do appreciate all of your messages um, I can't believe that we made it this far I never saw this day coming so I'm very very grateful that we have come this far of course at this point we need to start treating this YouTube channel like it matters and like my customers matter of course I cannot just take a trip disappear for two months to Timbuktu and come back and just say okay I'm back the plan today is um, I'm kind of dressed up now I need to wear something thicker because guys it is freezing out here in this country even though it's now like really sunny today thankfully there's no rain I want to go and pick up just a few veggies and fruits because I want to make some okra soup this afternoon I want to go buy some spinach in the grocery store in the meantime today being November 5th the lockdown 2.0 started here in the UK, the second lockdown, and it's supposed to last for another month. So I don't know if what stores are going to be open right now. To be honest, I'm tired of trying to keep up with the news of the lockdown and what exactly we have access to or not. I just hope that we have food because as far as I'm concerned, this year 2020 has taught me one lesson and that is we could do without the clothes, we could do without the shoes, we could do without the bags, but you see that thing we call food. Anyways, guys, we'll get chatting today and I'll let you know what exactly I have been up to in all of the time that I've been silent. I mean, it's not so much of a life transformation or a life update, but considering that this is now a business, I have to update you guys where exactly I've been going to because my customers have been waiting for me and I know that it's not fair that I keep them in the loop. Today, I am wearing this hooded top which I got from Zara about two years ago now I'm sure I've worn it on one of my older vlogs when I was still living in Ireland so yes I like to keep stuff and I also have this leggings which I'm sure I also got from Zara a long time ago but anyways today it's a full-on black on black I can't be bothered about wearing a wig because I just need to be able to run in and run out and I feel like this serves its purpose anyways shopping is done um, I found the stores today somehow I just felt like there weren't so many people there but it almost felt like lots of people had the few people who were there just had like huge trolleys and they were very full so it just looked like a lot of people were doing like family size shopping today and for people like myself who had really small baskets <laughs> we only went there to waste our time so of course I looked around at some point when the queues were building up and I was like you know what? let me just go back and pick up a few extra stuff um, that are not on my list so that I don't have any reasons to come back to the stores at least not until next week while I was in the store guys something good happened to me and it was um, I received a phone call it was for a job yes me and my stories about work again I'm sure some people are sick and tired of me I'm talking about work already since I moved to the UK it's almost like I've been mourning all year about work 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 I get a job I leave the job I get a job I leave the job but anyways um, when I wanted to make this video my original plan was just to sit down and talk about the mistakes I have made so far since I've been living in the UK and the reason why I use the word so far in the sentence is because 
um, of course I've only lived here less than a year and this year has kind of been very restrictive in sense of I've not been able to actually socialize or interact with a lot of people thanks to COVID so I know that these are just the initial mistakes that I'm going to make um, for now and there'll still be a lot more to come in the future hopefully it won't be anything disastrous so somehow we're going to incorporate this work job interview into this gist but somewhere along the lines will come up um the first mistake that i have made so far is um let's talk about for shopping for food items of course when i arrived here chris and i were living in the student apartment his postgraduate apartment um in one of the colleges here and of course he had lived here for a couple of months so a little bit of background for those of you who are just catching up i used to live in ireland and i moved to the uk earlier in the year to join my spouse who had lived here for over a year and a half so it was important that i joined him at the time i joined him and there was there were two stores that were very close to our house for food shopping and that was in um, the sainsbury store and the waitress store i hope they don't flag down my video anyway chris had been shopping there much longer than when i arrived so by the time i arrived he was like oh you could always buy anything you need from the stores and i was like okay fine no problem of course he'd been going there and the prices were okay for him like and he didn't think that i mean men won't ever do any survey they just go into stores walk out like they don't think about the prices they just go in and come out you know it's women that are always very conscious at least women like myself so one of the days somewhere around, well, after i lived here for a couple of months you know a friend of mine and i were speaking and she's lived in the uk much longer and she was like where do you even buy your groceries and stuff so i was like oh i go to sainsbury's or waitrose and she was like wow she, she those are shops for like bougie people <laughs> i was like you're joking yeah like i, I thought bougie people go only go to like mns to buy food stuff and she was like no that please i should try and find them like the morrisons or the asda I was like what's the point <laughs> let me not bother myself like how bad can it be somewhere towards the end of summer chris and i decided to take a walk around cambridge and we landed in the aldi store aldi lidl like they have this retail park that has Aldi and lidl in the same place so we we landed in the aldi store guys and i was looking at prices of food stuff and i was just in my head making i was like wait 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 a minute wait is this banana bunch for 13 pence meanwhile i've been buying banana for two pounds whatever pence maybe 34 pence in sainsbury so how come i didn't even know this part like of course it had already dug a massive hole in my pocket at the time but anyways of course i never make that mistake afterwards mistake number two have to do with not applying for an ni number on time so the NI number here in the UK is the national insurance number and that's like your social security number, the number that you need to apply for jobs, for anything you want to do more for documentation. Months before I moved to the UK, Chris was like, Chichi, just call the NI office in the UK and make an appointment. They'll be able to give you an appointment so that once you arrive, um, even if it's like three months from when you call, you'll just be able to come in and attend your appointment and then they can process your documents however long it might take them. Somehow I was like, dude, stop disturbing me. Like, why exactly should I bother myself? I have a lot of things I need to still sort out here in Ireland. When I finish them, I'll be able to face the UK. So I decided to just take my time so that when I get here, I start the process. So I arrived and then that was like early January, of course. And I called their office, made the appointment. The appointment they gave me was somewhere in March, you know. That's like when the pandemic was about to happen. We had a trip to make to Nigeria in February. We decided, okay, let's go for a trip. By the time we come back in March, we'll be able to sort out this um, NI number issue. So I went to Nigeria, came back, and thankfully I was able to attend my appointment um, in the NI office without being affected by the pandemic. Because that was like when it was still just starting, before the lockdown was declared here in the UK. So I attended that um, appointment and they were like okay we'll send it out to you because normally it was supposed to take four weeks to get to me it now took like two months to eventually <laughs> get to me and of course i needed the ni number to apply for jobs like i needed the ni number for whatever the heck i needed to do open a bank account you know so i couldn't even do anything at all at the time and of course all of that delay played a key impact in delaying me from applying for a job when i was supposed to apply for a job so of course i had that whole gap in applying for in, in, in being able to get a job but that was just unnecessary avoidable 
delays that I could have avoided if only I was more proactive. Mistake number three. So I took a trip um, to London sometime after I just arrived. A friend of mine came in from Nigeria and she was like, oh girl, can you come and hang out with me in London? I was like, okay, how bad can it be? After all, I've lived in Dublin. Do I need to take permission from Chris? And of course, I didn't want him to know because it was like my first solo trip to, it was my first trip ever to London and then I was making a solo trip. I'm sure he wasn't going to be so pleased because I'm sure he wanted to probably make it like a trip that both of us would do for the first time. But I was like, you know what? This is a girl's hangout. Let me go hang out with my girl. She's just coming from Nigeria. We'll have so much fun. No men allowed. And so I decided, since I wasn't working at the time, I could just jet in and jet out before he comes back from work so that he doesn't even suspect anything at all. Anyways, I decided to just... I can't remember how I got to London. I think I took a train from Cambridge. I shall took a train because she'd given me the, some form of directions. And then she was like, okay, so when you get to the train, you come out and then you take the subway, get to the underground, you take the tube. I now got to the underground, guys. The crowd that I saw, I was like, wait, where are all these people coming from? Where are they going to? This is not the Dublin life at all. Like, I thought I knew what this place looked like. You ain't got no clue. Nobody was paying attention to any of my questions of, excuse me, please, can I? Excuse me, please, can you? <laughs> so it was almost as if, better start getting sharp right now and start finding your way. I managed to get on the escalator, of course, so I could find my way down to the tube. But somehow I made a huge mistake. I went and stood on the left-hand side. I think you're supposed to stand on the right-hand side and walk on the left-hand side. And of course, everybody's moving like really fast-paced. So a young man almost came from behind and pushed me down the escalator. And they're usually so long, I froze. Like, I was like, oh my God, like, see crowd. I almost fell down now. But anyways, thankfully, I was able to get past that and find my friend. But well, that was a very almost traumatic experience for me. I don't know if it's just in London or if it's the whole of UK where that rule applies but in all of my time in ireland i never come across that rule that says you stand on the right side and you move on the left hand side i think i'm actually i think i'm not sure if i'm getting it right but i think that's what it is mistake number four of course one of the attractions for me when chris was like that we're moving to the uk was at least they speak english language here and i wasn't going to have to worry about learning a new language not like learning a new language is any problem of course it sharpens your mind but for me, it was more like, is this my old age? Especially with trying to get a job, I just don't have the patience right now for someone to tell me to learn a new language before I start working somewhere. So, please, let's just be an English-speaking country. So, you can imagine my excitement once he was like, okay, we're moving to the UK. And then, I'd been at home for some time, eventually landed my first job um, interview. So, this was like my first face-to-face um, serious interaction with an english person or some english people guys i attended that interview and i think i was asked like 10 questions i don't think i answered up to seven or six of them by the time i was walking out i was like i'm sure i flopped i'm sure i'm not getting this job because this was just another level of English that my ear were, were hearing. I'm not sure if it was because my ears were now used to the Irish accents and somehow I was just struggling to hear what they were saying. But it was just a huge struggle for me to be able to understand what my interviewer was saying. So at that point, I realized, you know what? There is levels to this English. There's no need to be too confident with yourself because when you meet the owners of the language, you realize that you see this thing that I'm speaking, I need to be able to brush it up a little bit so that when we're interacting, it will be easier for me to actually understand what they're saying. But of course, I guess it was just a lot of anxiety. I guess it was just a lot of fear for my first serious face-to-face -face interview. But of course, I didn't get that job. The last one of the list mistake that I'll be sharing with you guys today is more like a reflection. Of course, this one I have chewed on it, regurgitated it, chewed on it again, and advised myself that i would made a really huge silly mistake so this is not for you guys to judge me here today it's more like okay let me just share this experience so that someone out there who might be a jjc like me will not make this kind of mistake in the nearest future anyways so this one has to do with my job experience so far here in the uk um of course you guys know my story from when i came in here for those of you who have been watching my videos so i got my first job here june 6 i think 2020 and I mean, I made a video here also sharing a day in my life in the office with you guys. Um, anyways, I done that job and 
somewhere in august i spent i started speaking with an agent and the reason i started speaking with the agent was because i had concerns so i had concerns because the job i felt it was too far off for me like in all of the time i was in ireland all the jobs i had done were like five minutes away from home so i'd always worked in really convenient distance from my home and i loved that kind of experience or that kind of life so coming over here now and having to travel too far i just felt like i couldn't do it for too long you know like i'll get tired of it i'll get bored of the travel in well i won't get bored of the type of travel but i'll get weary of the travel really quickly so i started speaking to an agent and i was like he should advise me does he think that if i leave the job because we're talking to another company at the time here in cambridge so i was like does he think if i leave this particular job they'll be ready to take me once i resign here at least a week after he was like oh sure with the way they are talking like we will be able to secure the job for me to start the next week so i resigned from my job of course with my full chest with the overconfidence in my profession because i mean i never ever gone for an interview as a medical radiographer and not gotten the job well at least not before i came into ireland well when i came to ireland of course the first few months it was difficult to get my first job and of course with my first interview here in the uk it was difficult to also land that job but those were like the only bad experiences i ever had with interviews at all in my life so i just kind of felt really confident in myself not realizing that we are now living in a covid time um, and one other reason why I left the job also was because I had a very difficult colleague that I was working with. She wasn't a bad person, but for me, I just knew that if I stayed in that job for a much longer time, we're going to clash and it was just not going to be good for our resume, at least for my resume. So it was like, you know what, it's just better for me to just separate myself from this relationship as early as possible. So it wasn't hard for me to make the decision when there was the choice of leaving. So I eventually left and then it was like it became more difficult to even secure a job this time around compared to when I first moved to the UK when I got my first job. But anyways, um, of course, in all of time since the end of August, September, October, and this is the beginning of November, I haven't worked. So it's not because I haven't wanted to, I didn't want to vlog. Like, I think it's just played a key role somehow in motivating me because somehow i've built my videos or i've created my videos in the past around going out and interacting with people at work you know so not having that opportunity to do it for some time kind of just made me shrink and that's somehow why i wasn't creating videos for the time that i was just silent here on my channel so that's it guys right now i've been a housewife to christopher for the last I don't even know how many months right now but it's not been too bad thankfully he's been a good support system but if there's anybody that they can stay in this year 2020 she did not make money it will be me and i'm not proud of it whether in youtube or whether in the office i did not just make money i cannot even sit down and write my budget for this year because it does not even exist anyways guys i shall now move to cooking my pot of okra soup before this young man comes back because right about now the time is 5.05 and he should be back somewhere around 7 p.m. Okay guys, at this point I think I just realized that I forgot to close this vlog properly. So at this point I'll just say thank you so much for watching. This is me trying to chop some onions to start cooking. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.